one of the things that um, I want to do is I want to trace this contour around the top side of this guitar. And typically the way I would do this is with a spline. Now splines can be a little tricky if you've never worked with them before. You know, generally what you want to do is place a, uh, a control point everywhere that there's an inflection in the curvature. So kind of think of like high points and low points. That's usually a good starting point for trying to work with a spline. And then generally you can um, modify it from there to kind of tweak the appearance. So if I use these control points, not too bad. Now, that being said, some people just find it a lot easier to work with things like lines and arcs. So what if I started um, creating this profile with lines and arcs instead? Well, I could create straight lines to approximate some of these edges that are a little flatter, and then I could transition into a series of arcs. It may not be the most efficient method, but the nice thing about lines and arcs is that they're very easy to dimension. Splines are quite difficult to dimension. They have continuously changing curvature which can kind of make things a little bit tricky if you're trying to be exact about the radius you're placing. And so by creating these arcs, when I go to dimension, I could actually make some pretty precise dimensions um, for the curvature of this body. Now, that looks pretty good, but the kind of area where this has its, its pitfalls is if I were to go create, let's say, a surface using that series of lines and arcs. If I do an extruded surface, what we're going to see is that it's not just one continuous surface. It's actually several different faces um, kind of making up this one surface body. So you'll see how I can make these individual selections here. And while that's not necessarily a deal breaker, it can make things a little bit more complicated later on when we start to do things like trims and knits and try to get this watertight body. It's just more surfaces to deal with. So what I'd like to do instead is maybe take that geometry I cre created but convert it into a spline using something called a fit spline. If I go back and edit that sketch, what I can do is in my search bar I can type in fit spline. And this fit spline tool allows me to select what we would call standard uh, analytical geometry, things like lines and arcs. or rather algebraic geometry. And it's going to convert that into a spline that really closely approximates uh, the original geometry. So I'm going to select that chain of lines and arcs. I'm going to uncheck the option on the left that says close spline. So that'll just give me just an open loop. And the other options that you have here are whether or not you want to delete the original geometry or keep it there uh, as construction geometry. And then you also have a tolerance slider that determines how tightly you want your spline to fit to the original geometry. Now, once you're done, it's going to replace that series of lines and arcs with a continuous spline. And where that kind of pays off is if we go look at our surface now, you'll see that it's one continuous surface. We don't have any boundaries within that surface, and that could make things a lot easier for us downstream when we start to merge additional surfaces or do things like trims and cuts. So keep that fit spline option in mind. It definitely lets you work with um, simpler sketch tools and then convert them to a spline once you're ready. And it can give you some really uh, robust surface bodies with relative ease.